In this lesson, we're going to look at some of the options we have when solving probability questions. Now at the beginning of this module, we examined the basic probability formula and found that we could combine it with basic listing or counting techniques to solve many questions. Later, we added more sophisticated formulas to handle more complex questions. Now generally speaking, these tools boil down to two options to consider when solving probability questions. You can use the basic probability formula, or you can apply one or more of the following probability rules. The good news is that most probability questions can be solved using more than one approach. The bad news is that some approaches take a lot of time to apply. So whenever you encounter a probability question, you should be aware of your options and choose that which is the fastest. Consider the following example. Here we are tossing a coin two times, and we want to find the probability that we get at least one heads. So one approach is to ask the question, what must occur in order to get at least one heads? Well, this can occur if one of the coins turns up heads, or both of the coins turn up heads. Since these two events are mutually exclusive, we can rewrite our probability as follows. Now at this point, we still have two separate probabilities to calculate, and this could take a while. So what are some other options? Well, since the question involves at least, we might consider applying the complement formula to rewrite the probability as follows. Now, not getting at least one heads is the same as getting zero heads. So at this point, we still need to find this probability. Well, let's go over here for our calculations. Here we'll ask the question, what must occur in order to get zero heads? For this to happen, we need to get two tails. So we need tails on the first flip and tails on the second flip. Since these two events are independent, we will apply the formula for independent events and rewrite the probability as follows. From here, we know that this probability equals one half and this probability equals one half as well. One half times one half is one quarter, so the probability of getting zero heads is one quarter. When we plug this value into our calculations, we see that the probability of getting at least one heads is equal to three quarters. Now, while this solution is probably faster than the first option we examined, it probably isn't the fastest approach. For our next approach, let's apply the basic probability formula. So to find the probability that at least one toss is heads, we need to find the total number of outcomes, as well as the total number of outcomes with at least one heads. Now to find the total number of outcomes, we can apply counting techniques we learned in the counting module, or we can simply list them. In this case, it's easy to list them since there are only four. There's heads on the first toss and heads on the second toss, heads on the first and tails on the second, tails then heads, and tails then tails. Now before we apply our formula, we should recognize its core limitation. It requires each outcome to be equally likely. So let's confirm this. Now since the probability of getting heads is equal to the probability of getting tails, all of the outcomes here are equally likely, so we can apply the formula. As always, we will begin with the denominator. Now there are four outcomes, so the denominator here is four. Next, how many of the four outcomes are such that there is at least one heads? Well, there are three such outcomes, so the numerator is three. So the probability is three quarters that at least one toss will turn up heads. As you can see, this was probably the fastest approach. All right, now let's examine a different question. Here we are randomly selecting two people for a committee, and we want to find the probability that both selected people will be women. Let's examine our options. One option is to apply the basic probability formula. We can use this because when selecting two people, the possible outcomes are equally likely. To apply the formula, we need to determine the total number of outcomes, and we need to determine the number of outcomes where both selected committee members are women. Let's begin with the denominator. In how many ways can we create a two-person committee? To help us with our calculations, let's let the letters A to J represent the 10 people, where the letters A to D represent the four men, and the letters E to J represent the six women. So we have 10 people all together, and we want to choose two of them to be on a committee. Since the order of the two selected people does not matter, this is a combination question. 
So we can select two people from 10 people in 10 choose two ways. Now the numerator. How many of the outcomes consist of two women? Well, there are six women altogether, and we need to choose two of them to be on the committee. Once again, the order of the two selected people does not matter, so this is a combination question. We can select two women from six women in six choose two ways. At this point, when we evaluate the two combinations, we get 15 over 45, which simplifies to be one third. So the probability is one third that the two selected people will both be women. Now for this approach, we used the basic probability formula and some counting techniques to solve the question. Are there any other approaches we could have taken? Well, what about using one or more of these probability formulas? Let's try this. We want to know the probability that both selected people will be women. So what must occur in order for both people to be women? Well, for this to happen, the first selected person must be a woman and the second selected person must be a woman. Since these two events are dependent, we will apply the AND probability formula for dependent events to rewrite the probability as follows. Now let's begin with this probability, the probability that the first person selected is a woman. Well, there are 10 people all together, and 6 of them are women, so the probability here will be 6 tenths. Now we need to determine the probability that the second person selected will be a woman, given that the first person selected is a woman. Well, if we assume that the first person selected is a woman, then there are 9 people remaining, and 5 of them are women. So if the first person selected is a woman, the probability is 5 ninths that the second person selected will be a woman. At this point, when we multiply the two fractions, we get one third, so the probability is still one-third that the two selected people will be women. So which of the two solutions to this question was the best solution? Well, it's hard to say. They both probably took the same amount of time to complete. The important point to recognize here is that we were able to solve both of the questions using more than one approach. So keep that in mind whenever you encounter a probability question. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we examined two primary approaches for tackling probability questions, using the basic probability formula and applying probability rules.